Acts chapter 2. And once again, thank you for the opportunity to come and minister here, Pastor Gerald, in our daughter church here in Rancho Cordova. Boy, this has been long and awaiting. Amen. And I, I think of the days, I believe it was me and Pastor Gerald, we drove around Rancho. And uh, we at the time there in North Sac, we were looking to relocate and we were seeking the will of God. And there was already another church there in North Sac. And we were saying, maybe it's us for us to go to Rancho. And we really have to pray and see what the will of the Lord is. And during that time, we had Hampton Drives and we looked around here. And it just wasn't time and it wasn't the will of God. But little did we know that it was the will of God. It was just not the timing of God. And that I wasn't the one to come to Rancho Cordova, but that God would raise up somebody who would answer the call and come to this city and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I'll go and I'll do your will. Come on, get excited tonight. And let the Lord know that you know that this is a great and awesome work that God is doing tonight. So what a privilege it is. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, there in Northside, we're proud of Rancho Cordova. Amen. We're proud of what God is doing here. We're Amen. proud of Pastor Gerald and Sister Gail because we know that they've answered the call. And God has great things in store for all of us. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 17. When you get there, simply say, I am there. I am there. Pastor Gerald scared me. He said he was recording this, so I got to watch my P's and Q's, and I got to behave, and I got to do things right, and boy, what a drag that is. But I'll try and behave, amen? Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 17. When you get there, simply say, I am there. The Word of God reads this way. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Tell somebody the last days. Last days. Says God that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Any young men here tonight? Amen. And your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. Father, I pray that you will anoint my lips to speak your word. And I also pray, Father, that you will anoint ears to hear and hearts to be open, O oh God, to be able to understand the word that you have for us tonight in this unity service, God, where Lord Norsak and Rancho Cordova has come together, Lord, to, to see something, Father, Lord, that is going to, that begun years ago, but today, Father, it's just going to be just confirmed and affirmed by the Spirit and the presence of God Almighty. So, Lord, bless your word to the hearers in the name of Jesus, and we all once again say it. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I'll try not to keep you too long because a lot of us have things to do tomorrow. Somebody say amen if you got things to do tomorrow. Amen. And then again, if you don't have anything to do, then praise God, we can still here till 1, 2 in the morning. I won't care that. Amen. amen. We'll turn this into a little all-night prayer meeting right after. Amen. And then we'll just go ahead and, and get a hold of God. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. amen. Tonight, my subject or my title to the message is Dreamers and Visionaries. Dreamers and Visionaries. And I believe that this title is appropriate for what we are doing here today. Because as I look around and I see what God is doing and what God has done, and I reflect back, even in hearing the stories and the testimony of Pastor Gerald and his wife, I see that this is a byproduct of what God has done through Dreamers and Visionaries. And my prayer tonight is that there'll be some more dreamers and some more visionaries here today so that this vision will continue, come on somebody, and do what God has called us to do. Somebody here say amen. amen. I want to speak to you about dreamers and visionaries. In order to fulfill the purpose of God, I believe, listen to this, that we need them both working together hand in hand. Come on, God. We need them both working, locking arms together in order to accomplish the will of God. Amen. As Peter preached his Pentecost message, he made a powerful reference pertaining to the times that we are living in today. See, a lot of us, we want to refer back to Acts chapter 2. 
and look and see and read uh, as far as Peter's testimony regarding what would take place in the end times, the times that you and I are living through here today. And sometimes we want to say it was for them. It was for them and at that time. But I want you to know something that, yes, it was for them, but it was as much for them as it was or even more so for us. Can somebody say amen? I also believe that as he was there preaching, and you know what, he was out there, and you know what, the Spirit of God had just come down upon those 120 in that upper room, and as they were there getting a hold of God, we all know what happened is where we get our name from, Pentecostal, the Spirit of God landed, people got touched by God, a miracle took place, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and right after that, Peter goes outside of that prayer meeting and begins to testify to the people of God that the times that were spoken of by the prophet Joel had just come. And it was the beginning of something powerful. And as we read the scripture earlier, as he, as he quoted it, we see that he talks about, listen to this. He said that there would be a time where the Spirit of God would be poured out. Come on, somebody. Say amen. That a time would come when God would pour out of his Spirit upon all people. He also added this, that there would be a time of a prophetic revelation, a time where the Word of God, a revelation from God's Word, would come forth and begin to touch lives. How many know that we're all a byproduct of this revelation that we have all experienced here today? Peter also said this, young men would have visions and or be visionaries. Amen. And he also said this lastly, that old men would have dreams. You know, it's, it's obvious if you've known me for a while that I'm not a young man anymore. Come on, let's all fess up and say amen. When I came up here to Sacramento some 12 years ago, I could still qualify, maybe pass for a young man, but now that I see things and I look in the mirror and I look at my license and I go, you lying? <laughs> I'll be very honest with you, I am not a young man anymore. But I want you to know something, that whether you're a young man or an old man or an in-between man or woman, that there's still a plan and a purpose and a place for you in this ministry, in this church, and that God wants to do what he's been doing all along here in this place. Can somebody say amen? amen. Dreams and visions are so similar by nature that they're often mistaken one for the other. Sometimes when you talk to people and you ask them, look, was that a vision or, or was that a dream? Uh, usually they won't be able to tell you really what it was. Are you hearing me today? In fact, sometimes the only thing separating the two is whether one was asleep or awake when we were having them. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Webster says that a series, a dream is a series of thoughts. Images or emotions occurring during one sleep. He also says that it's an experience of waking life having the characteristic of a dream. He also went on to say that it would be a strong desire, a goal, or a purpose. Something that would fully satisfy, like a wish come true. That would be a dream. Are you still with me today? Some synonyms are this. Daydream. Delusion. Hallucination, illusion, come on somebody, and one we all know, a pipe dream. But I want you to know that the, that the dream that Joel was being quoted out of by Peter was not necessarily nowhere near a pipe dream, but it was talking about being people that were visionaries and dreamers that would be able to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the four corners of the world. Can somebody say amen? See, I believe today that God is still raising up visionaries and dreamers. I want you to know something that I myself am a byproduct of a visionary and a dreamer. And you yourselves here today, if you're in Rancho Cordova, you're also a byproduct of a visionary and a dreamer. And we need more visionaries and more dreamers to continue to rise up and take their place. And we're going to take this city and we're going to take the state and eventually the world for Jesus Christ. I 
believe that what Peter was trying to tell the hearers there in chapter 2 of Acts, he was trying to tell them that the time had come for visionaries, come on somebody, and dreamers.